Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're doing another Spotlight on Plugins. We're continuing on with our RGP Lua uh, adventure. We're looking at a script by Jacob Winkler called Harp Pedal Wizard. And by golly, is it actually wizardry? Uh, so I'm going to go into my Plugins menu and go to the RGP Lua, and I'm gonna, just going to pull up this uh, Lua script called Harp Pedal Wizard. And very similar to Michael McLennan's Chord Kerner uh, uh, plugin, uh, this does pull up its own user interface, which is kind of brilliant and uh, easy to use in a lot of ways. So uh, I just this is basically what the video is about. But before I really get into that, um, I just want a, a couple technical things that you do need RGP Lua 0.63 or later to run the Heart Pedal Wizard. And because it's on RGP Lua, I believe you can only use this in version 25 or later. Um, the other nice thing about this heart pedal wizard is that it will recognize the file, uh, whether or not it's smufel or non smufel If the file is smufel it will use the Finale Maestro smufel font to create the diagram glyphs because those glyphs exist in the Finale Maestro smufel font. If the file is not smufel uh, in 27 or in a previous version of Finale 25 or 26, it will use the engraver text H font, which is where we would find the heart pedal diagram glyphs uh, previous to them being integrated into the Finale Maestro Smufel font. So it's nice that the the, uh, the Lewis script here actually recognized that and p pull up the correct font for the file. So, uh, And if you haven't installed RGP Lua yet, uh, I will put a link in the description for the video that I did recently on how to do that. And maybe right here I'll put a link so that you can go watch that um, and find out where to get this heart pedal wizard on Nick Mazook's um, repository of all the uh, Lewis scripts. So you can go check that out and then come back here and, and see how this works. So diving right into the heart pedal wizard, um, it's kind of easy to use uh, and pretty powerful too. The way that it works, there's sort of two different sides to it. There's a setup of the pitches and then there's the options for the diagrams and the note names. Uh, let's just talk about the setup of the pitches first. In the top section, you have sort of two different modes, scale, uh, scales and chords. Um, in the bottom section, you'll see sort of the pedal diagram itself, DCB on the left, EFGA on the right. This is how the heart pedals actually work. And three check boxes for each pitch. And with a C major scale, they're all set to natural. The, the middle row is natural, the top row is flat, and the bottom row is sharp. This is uh, imitating how the heart pedals actually work. Um, so you do have your, your scale mode, you have your chord mode, and if neither of these things are checked, basically you're in manual mode, and so you can set up these uh, pitches however you want and, and go from there. So you don't actually have to use the scales or the chords uh, in the top section uh, if you don't want to. But what's really nice in this top section is that he gave us a lot of options, and it's pretty easy to use. You go to the root, you decide, okay, I want a D, and you can say flat, natural, or sharp, and then you can choose a particular scale. And for the scales, he gave us a bunch of different options. There's major, uh, natural, and harmonic minor, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, and Aeolian mode. He uh, skipped out on Locrian, although uh, Jacob says that he might actually add the Locrian mode back eventually. There's a Hungarian minor, whole tone, major pentatonic, and minor pentatonic. I'm not going to get too much, uh, too deep into this, but I will say that uh, depending on the root and the particular scale that you're using, for example, the Hungarian minor, it's just the way that the scale is built, there are certain roots where the Hungarian minor is actually impossible to do on the harp. So if you choose that particular root with the Hungarian minor, uh, the plugin will give you a warning that says that you can't actually do this. Um, and then there's a couple other mistakes that I've found, particularly in the whole tone and pentatonic scales. Just the way that the algorithm is working, uh, occasionally, depending on the root, you'll get five notes in the whole tone scale instead of the six that you should, uh, and four in the pentatonic instead of five. It, it kind of has to do with the way that the plugin is prioritizing doubling notes in the harp because you have to account for all seven pitches. Um, it works a lot better with the modes and the natural and harmonic and major scales. Um, but with some of these at the bottom, there are some uh, tweaks that uh, need to be made. And I've actually talked to Jacob about this, and he might eventually uh, produce a update to this that will kind of address some of those issues. But most of the time it works. Most of the time it works really well. Um, and uh, as, like I said, if, if something doesn't come up correctly, you can always just manually override it in the bottom left corner to get what you need anyway. So anyway, so this is how it works. You choose the scale uh, D major or D natural minor, and you'll see that the pitches in the bottom left corner will be changed to reflect whatever it is you're choosing, um, which is really kind of cool. 
And the other option is chords. And with the chords, you actually get six different types of chords. You have dominant seven, major seven. Again, you'll see them switch over here. Minor seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished seven, and augmented. Uh, so that's a, a really nifty option as well. Obviously, you don't get every possible you know, chord that you could have. I mean, the list would go on and on, and it would be an insane amount of programming to do all that. But he did give you sort of six um, common chords that you can choose from. And I will say what's interesting about this is that obviously with a harp, you have seven pitches that you have to account for when you do this. So for something like a D dominant seven, there's nothing you can do with the E unless you want an E flat for a D seven flat nine or, or E sharp for uh, D seven sharp nine, right? You have to do something with the E. So with the dominant seven, it's going to give you the E natural, which really makes this, you know, a D nine chord. Uh, there's just sort of no way to avoid that in this particular case. However, if you choose a particular chord like D flat seven, where it is possible to eliminate the ninth, the algorithm actually does that, which is really kind of cool. So you get D flat, C sharp, doubling the D flat, B, uh, which is the C flat essentially, in the D flat seven chord, uh, E sharp to F, you get F, and you get G sharp for A flat and A flat for A flat. So uh, there's only four pitches in this scale, which is nice. You're not getting the the ninth um, like you are with the D uh, dominant seven chord, which you have to get um, just because of the way the harp is built. So it's really cool that the algorithm will figure this out and um, you know give you the ninth when you have to have it and, and eliminate it when you don't. The other really nifty thing is that it, it doubles pitches intelligently here too. So in this particular case, the D flat dominant seven chord, it's, it's using the C as a C sharp to double the root and using the B for the seven. Uh, so you're not doubling the seven with you know D flat, C flat, B, which would be weird. I think any harpist, if they saw a D flat seven chord, might set it up this way. I think that's probably what they would do. So uh, it's, it's kind of cool that it, it kind of does this. And of course, like I said, you know, you can certainly override any of this manually to give you whatever you want. Obviously, there's no 13 chord in here, but to set up a D flat 13 chord, it's easy enough to just, you know, change your C to C flat and change your B to B flat. And now you basically have a C flat 13 chord. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different uh, things you can do here. All right, so now once you have it figured out how you want to set it up, let's just go back to C natural major uh, scale. Um, once you have it set up the way you want, just select a measure, and then you have two options here. You can choose diagrams or note names. We'll start with diagrams and just have that checked, and then all you do is press go, and just like that, you'll get your harp pedal diagram uh, in the score. It will always put it below the selection, so if I choose the uh, bottom staff here and choose a different scale, D major, uh, you'll see that it will put it below. So uh, just be careful about which uh, measure you have selected. The other thing is that I have no music in this particular score, but if you uh, choose a partial measure, uh, it's always going to choose, uh, it's always going to put the, the harp diagram uh, right at the left of the selection. So it is possible to get these in the middle of the measure as well. Uh, you just have to be careful about how you're uh, selecting the particular measure. Now you notice that these uh, items are green, which means that they, yes, they are expressions. And by default, it will put them in the technique text category. And you'll see your, your three pedal markings created here. Now there's a couple little things that are interesting to know about this. If we choose edit, um, what's interesting that it says use technique text category fonts text uh, times new Roman 12 plane is checked, but that's actually not the case. Uh, somehow or another, it's actually overriding this, and if you uncheck this, it will reveal what's actually being used, which is Finale Maestro 12. Um, now, Finale Maestro 24 is usually the size that we will use for um, uh, music notation in Finale, but as you can see, the, the 24 point font is just huge for these pedal diagrams. So I think 12 point is a good choice for this, um, but you can always, of course, just change it. If you want it slightly large, you can change it to 14 and uh, it'll just be a little bit larger. The other interesting thing here is that if I were to edit my categories, and I'm just gonna duplicate my technique text category and call it harp diagrams, and it has to be called harp diagrams. It has to be called exactly this. I'm just gonna make a slight change here to, to go below staff baseline or entry. Um, if you have a category called harp diagrams, and I'm just gonna go ahead and move these to that category, Yep, um, you will see one thing happen immediately, which is interesting. First of all, this one looks okay. That's because I sort of overrode the uh, font to uh, 14 here. 
But these guys are still using the harp uh, diagram category font, which is Times New Roman 12. Um, and even if we uncheck this, we don't get that finale maestro uh, override here. So you would have to actually change this manually to the finale maestro font, if I can find that here. Uh, finale maestro, there we go. And click OK, and it will go back to normal. The other interesting thing that you can do is that if you actually edit the category and change the text font, not the music font, the music font is already set to Finale Maestro, but if you change the text font to Finale Maestro, just like this, let me see the EF. I can never find this quickly when I need to. There we go. Um, and you could, if you want, change it to uh, size 14 here. Uh, you'll see that that will get. Uh, changed back to the Finale Maestro 14 plane, which is nice. So there is a way to kind of do this, and we can always reset to category to get these all to 14, uh, just like that. So it is interesting. And with this harp diagrams category like that, now I can actually enter a new one. Let's call it, let's say, E, e natural major 7 chord just add another diagram there. It will actually put that harp diagram in the harp diagrams category. Now, it still overrides the text font. So if you uncheck this, it will say 12. However, if you recheck it, it will change it back to 14. So there's a little wonkiness going on there if you wanna change the size of these like that. But uh, that's how you would, you would go about doing that. But anyway, it's, it's, ni it's nice that if you have this category called harp diagrams, it will actually put them in there. It has to be called exactly that, though. All right. So that is the diagrams uh, portion of this. The other side of this is note names. And there's some options here that we'll talk about. Uh, the first one below that is the stack. And with the stack option selected, it will uh, list the note names in the order that you would normally see them in, which is the uh, right pedals on top and uh, left pedals on bottom. So let's just do one without that first. We always have to have something selected here. Let's say we're going to do C, uh, Dorian. Why not? And we're just going to use note names. Without the stack selection, you'll see that it will put them right in a row. If I choose stack and do a different one, D major, uh, it should put them one on top of the other, just like that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's how that works. And again, with these uh, expressions, they, they, it will put it in the technique text category. And what's nice about this, if you look at this, is that it, you'll see these gray boxes. This is indicating that it's using the uh, inserts here for the sharp flats and naturals, which is handy because uh, if you were to actually change the size of all of this to go from 12 to 24 or something, the sharps and naturals and flats and everything will uh, increase in size um, proportionally. In fact, you can actually change the whole um, uh, font itself to whatever you want, and it will still uh, use the, basically, these are the uh, Finale Maestro uh, flats, sharps, and naturals. It's, it's basically the default music font, which is actually advantageous, again, because if you change the default music font to, say, Finale Jazz, if you want the handwritten thing, um, those flats and sharps and naturals will actually uh, change to the finale jazz font. So that's actually really handy that he's, he's had, he has the, the wizard doing those as inserts. Now, in addition to this, there is the partial option and there's also the preserve lanes, which is, which is sort of a sub option of the partial, just the preserve lanes basically does the same things as stack without this. Basically what you're doing is you're only putting the, uh, the notes that are new um, in a straight line, or you're preserving the, the top and bottom uh, distribution here. So we just did D major. So if I do something like, let's go to E, E major, and we're going to go here, and we're going to have uh, partial and preserve lanes, and I'm going to press go, and you'll see that it's only going to put in the G sharp and the D sharp, which are the two pitches that change between uh, D and E, right? Now, the one thing I will say about the partial option here, uh, this is a big caveat. The way that the harp pedal wizard determines this is kind of odd. Um, it kind of has to be this way because the, the wizard can't actually go back in time in the piece and analyze what was um, on the previous measure. So the only way that this actually really works is it, it bases it on what you last ran within the harp pedal wizard. So the fact that I last ran a D major scale 
and then changed it to E major scale, it's basing those, those new pitches on what I last ran. Now this presents a problem if you uh, say make some edits and you, you have a whole you know, piece and different pedal setups and then you go back in the middle and you have to make a change, um, it's not gonna be able to look back to whatever the last pedal setup was uh, to give you, um, uh, to give you the, the new pitches. So uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. It kind of works pretty well if you just keep on going in order, you know, from left to right, it will kind of work. So if I go in here and I say, okay, now I'm gonna go to uh, a, a flat. Um, well, actually this, is, this might change all seven, isn't it? Or, yep. Um, uh, so you can kind of see uh, what it's going to do. Sorry if I go to B flat, right? It should only change two things, the A natural and the D natural, right? Uh, so that's what's going on. And then you do have the option here in the, the enter pedals. So this is sort of the manual way. This kind of really only works with the partial option checked. Uh, you, you can kind of change if I wanted to go and change that A natural back to A flat and I wanted to change the B flat to B natural, I could do that here um, without having to set up the scale, without having to do anything, and I just press go, and it should give me the A flat and the B natural. The interesting thing is that it's still analyzing what was last run in the heart pedal wizard, but it's only changing what you're manually entering here. So it does have some limited usages, um, and you can't exactly force the wizard to just put these particular pedals there. Um, if you're going back uh, and editing things, it, it gets a little bit tricky. But you know, one thing that's that you can kind of uh, get away with if you if you kind of get yourself in a in a weird spot is if you know you have if you know you need to change if you know you need to add F sharp or something. What you could do is actually just you know just do a a C major scale, run it, and then just delete that. And then if you just need to change an F sharp, just choose F sharp. This way, the the all the naturals are sort of in the um, the in, in the the ROM, I guess, of the heart pedal wizard, and then you press the F sharp, and you will actually get that F sharp. That's sort of a, a hack to kind of get away with um, any changes that need to be made uh, retroactively. So, um, having using the enter pedals without the partial option checked sort of doesn't make a lot of sense. It will kind of work, but it's you're going to get the whole. Um, uh, note names, you're going to get the whole list of pitches rather, and um, plus whatever you put in here, which is not really the intention of it. It's really, this is really kind of designed to be used with the partial. You can end up with some strange results if you try and do it without that check. So, so yeah, anyway, so that's, that's kind of what's going on. This, this little heart pedal wizard does a lot. Um, just the, the, the fact that you can create these diagrams that quickly is, is just incredible. Um, because these are sort of a huge pain in the neck if you need to actually type these into the expression categories. It's almost nearly impossible, especially with Smeeful trying to type the Unicode characters. Um, uh, so this is a, a really great thing. It does get a little bit wonky when you try and um, edit things and use the partials and, and all that stuff. So uh, you do kind of have to be a little bit cautious going forward and just double check your work with all this stuff. But, you know, overall, this, this heart pedal wizard is really a great tool for anybody that writes for harp and writes for harp pedals. Um, so, you know, if, if you need to do that, I'd really encourage you to get this and, and play around with it because it's, it's kind of brilliant. And uh, kudos to Jacob, uh, Jacob Winkler for creating this. Um, it's a great little, great little Lewis script. All right, so that's all there is to the harp pedal wizard RGP Lewis script. I hope this has helped. I hope you've learned a lot and uh, hopefully you can uh, get this for yourself and, uh, you know, start making your harp diagrams. All right. Once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I will see you soon on the next video.